In this video, we'll review the asynchronous programming model for Windows 8 apps and discuss how we can use the async and away keywords in the feed data source class to download RSS feeds asynchronously. Let's get started. Using the away keyword in C-sharp, the code for retrieving the feed asynchronously is similar to the code you use to retrieve the feed synchronously. Let's take a look. In the getFeeds async method, you call getFeedAsync for each of the blog feeds you want to retrieve. Where possible, you pass in the URL for the Atom feed because it includes author data that you want to show. If there's no Atom feed, use the RSS feed. When each blog feed is returned, let's go to the bottom here, you add it to the feeddatasource.feeds collection using the add method. To do this using synchronous methods, your code might look like this. This getFeeds is a fake synchronous version of what the getFeeds async would look like. So here we have a get feed, we retrieve that data, and just like we did before, we'd add it to the collection. Now what I'm going to do is just hit outlining and say collapse to definitions so we can see the differences between the two methods. The first thing to notice is that you add the async keyword to the method signature. You can use the await keyword only in a method that's defined as async. In fact, Visual Studio will show you an error that says you have to mark that method as async. Next, when we have an asynchronous task that doesn't have a return type, for a synchronous method we'd use the void keyword. Now we just use a task without any data. Now let's explore our getFeeds async method. And we'll see the getFeed async method returns a task of feed data type. This represents the feed data that will eventually be the return value of the method. At this point in the code, the call to getFeed async is made and a task feed data is returned. Then the next line of code is executed to get feed2, but feed1 is not added to the feeds collection until the feed data object is actually passed to the task feed data that's waiting for it. We'll come back to this shortly, but now let's look at what happens inside the get feed async method. To do that, I'm going to right click and choose go to definition, or you can hit F12 to go to that method. Here, you specify the return type of get feed async as task of feed data. This tells the compiler to generate a task that represents the feed data object that the method retrieves. Let's take a look inside the method. Inside the method, you instantiate a syndication client class called client and call its retrieve feed async method to get the syndication feed that contains the RSS or Atom info that you want. Because retrieve feed async is an asynchronous method, you use the await keyword again. The await keyword tells the compiler to do a lot of work for you behind the scenes. The compiler schedules the rest of the method after this call as a callback to be executed when the call returns. It then immediately returns control to the calling thread, typically the UI thread, so that the app remains responsive. The task feed data that represents the eventual outcome of this method, a feed data object, is returned to the caller at this point. When retrieve feed async returns a syndication feed with the data you want, the rest of the code in your method is executed. And, importantly, it's executed in the same thread context that you made the original call from, the UI thread, so you don't have to worry about using a dispatcher if you want to update the UI in this code. With the syndication feed retrieve, we can then set all the different properties for title, subtitle, and so forth for the feed data and feed item data classes. When the code gets down here to the return statement, if we scroll down, it's not actually returning in the sense that a synchronous method returns. Remember that the method returned to the caller immediately after the await statement. It returned a task of feed data to represent the eventual result of the method. Here you finally get the result. The line return feed data gives the feed data object that is the result of the method to the task feed data that is waiting for it. Now if we jump back to the getFeeds async method, here we see feed1, and here we're going to wait until the get feed async method actually returns the feed data. The difference here is that we're using the await keyword, and when we use the await keyword, we're retrieving the result of that asynchronous operation versus not having the await keyword, which returns a task data type back. Now that we have reviewed how async and await work, we're going to switch gears a little and actually set up the data for our application. First, I'm going to hit Shift-Alt-Enter, or I can hit the full screen button here to get us out of full screen mode. And I want to double click the app.xaml file. I'll go ahead and just increase the uh, font size here 140% to make it a little easier to follow. 
And right after the Merge Dictionary Declaration, we're actually going to build our own resource dictionary here. So underneath the Merge Dictionary, let's add a new line, and we'll call this local colon feed data source. And we'll say x key, x pointing to a namespace on the XAML file here, to just let us know that we're trying to add a key so that we can retrieve it later. And we'll call this feed data source. Now what we want to do is retrieve the feeds. We're going to add code to the onLaunch method override in the app.xaml.cs file. To do that, let's go view code, and let's increase the font size here to 140%, and we'll hit Shift-Alt-Enter in that full screen mode again. And let's scroll our files to the top so we can see the onLaunch method. The first thing we're going to do is, because we're going to be retrieving our data, we need to mark this method as async. Now before we actually try and get some data for the web, what we can do is use the get internet connection profile to make sure that we actually have a, a way to talk to the internet. So to do that, let's just show that quickly. Var connection profile equals network information dot and I'll just use the using windows dot networking dot connectivity Add that namespace there just to save me some code here. Network information dot get internet connection profile. If the connection profile doesn't equal null, that means we actually have an internet connection we can retrieve this data. To retrieve the data, we'll build our feed data source. Data source equals, and we'll just do a quick cast here app dot current dot resources feed data source that we built in our app dot xaml file if the uh, feed data source is not equal null then we're going to do a quick check of the feed count if feed data source dot feeds dot count equals zero, then let's actually go ahead and get that data. Oh wait, feed data source dot get feeds async. What this will actually do is call all 14 of those blogs, get the data, and wait until it's completed. Now the one other thing we want to do here just for completeness sake is add an else statement if we don't have a connection profile and there's an issue connecting to the internet. And I'll say var message dialog equals new message dialog. And I'll hit control dot. And remember, this is in the windows.ui.popups. And now let's display a dialog. An internet connection is needed to download feeds. And to save us some time, I'll just copy paste here. We just say, please check your connection, restart the app. So there's the long message that we want to display. We'll do var result equals message dialog show async to actually show that message. Now we've written a lot of code. Let's actually go full screen and click build. We'll click build solution and make sure everything works. And you can actually click run here as well. And because this is going to instantiate on the app.xaml, you'll know your application actually worked if you don't see a pop-up here or see an error message from Visual Studio. If there are errors, Visual Studio will show us the info about our errors. Now we can switch back by using Alt-Tab. Now within our app, what I can do is actually add a breakpoint. And we do that by clicking here and adding a breakpoint. And I'm going to click Run. And what's going to happen is our application is going to load. And what we can do is use this to test whether feed data source actually has data. So just by mousing over, we see we get this plus symbol. We see we have 14 feeds. And uh, let's just choose Extreme Windows blog here that we were looking at before. We can go into items and look at the first item. And we see the content. And we see this little magnifying glass. And we'll choose the HTML visualizer. And boom. What we can see is while we're actually debugging our application, 
we can look inside the data using the HTML visualizer and actually see the content of that feed item as HTML. And again, the point here is that we're able to use Visual Studio's debugging tools by using a breakpoint and actually look at the data directly within our file so we can see whether the, the, our data source is actually retrieving data. For now, let's go ahead and remove the breakpoint and we'll stop this exercise. Thank mm -hmm. you.